running a successful home-based business, today on Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized, and on today's show, we're taking a little bit different angle. We're talking about organizing, but we're going to be talking about setting up and operating a successful home-based business, whether it be multi-level marketing or whatever you run from your home, but from an organizing perspective and, and success perspective. And with us is Mary Dykstra, who is with uh, WithinReach.biz, is the name of your company. And well, that's the website. Oh, that's the website. The, the name company's of the named com- differently. is WithinReach Organizing Services. Okay, and where are you located? Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay, But great. I deal also nationally. Okay, so. great. And you also happen to be the president of the National Association of Professional Organizers, NAPO. At this point, I am very blessed to also be able to have that title as a volunteer leader, yes. Great. Now, how long have you been in the organizing business? I've been a professional organizer for 14 years. However, I have a number of years before that in project management and marketing. Okay. Now, we're going to talk today about setting up, operating, being successful at Mm -hmm. a home-based business. Mm -hmm. And a lot of professional organizers have offices and big staffs, but Mm -hmm. a lot of them work from home too, don't they? Yes. So, I mean, this is going to apply to the, uh, the organizers that listen to this show, but also there's all kinds of opportunities. In an economy like this, you have multi-level marketing opportunities. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of, so kind of address how that whole opportunity has just arisen and how people have seized it. Well, I think one of the things is, is that we've seen a huge increase of home-based businesses. When the economy started going down in 07 and 08, there were a number of people who were downsized, right-sized, or let go and they still needed to have work and the one thing that they could do or that they had a passion around is that they could sell something that they believed in, whether it was a Mary Kay makeup or some uh, jewelry, whether it was Amway, Cutco knives, there's just there's a myriad of things that are available, supplements, and they call that multi-level marketing. And so they have some support from home office Mm -hmm. in terms of the products they sell, but they might not have the business background in in terms of how how to run a business Mm -hmm. and also how to set up boundaries if they're doing it from their home, where they can set those things up and how they manage their time, their resources, their focus, Mm -hmm. and the working of the business. Now, some people look at multi-level marketing and say, oh, that's a pyramid scheme or whatever. And of course, there are good ones and bad ones, and we're not getting into talking about specific businesses today. But what the fact is, is that most people that probably do that maybe have come from either uh, a corporate background or maybe they've never even been in business before. So how does someone like that start a business? And and, I mean, because they might be passionate about the product, Mm -hmm. right, or the service, but how do they do This is a business. It is. It absolutely should be a business. And so one of the things is that if you're thinking pyramid, that's not really what multi-level marketing is about. The complication with multi-level marketing is is that you have a company that sells a product and they use you as a distributor, Mm -hmm. but you also have the ability to be the retailer. Mm -hmm. So it's you would sell, if you're my end client, I would sell you a product. Let's say I sell you knives. Mm -hmm. But if you're really passionate about this and you would like to make some money, then you're also going to sell that product to somebody else. So then all of a sudden my responsibility is to help you be successful in helping somebody else start that other business that they're doing. So that's really where it comes down to time management and having to focus. So some people create their own products and we have a number of organizers who who create products but we also have people in the public who've been very good about creating products. One of the first things that you have to do is figure out what is it that I want to do How much money do I think I need to make on it to be successful? Because that's a marker that you need to have. Mm -hmm. And how am I going to structure my space, my time, and my finances and resources around Mm -hmm. that? And so when people bring me in, they say, well, I've got these products, I've got these flyers, I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things that come up is, I don't know where to advertise. There's an expo that there's an opportunity. They told me I can get it for $100, mm-hmm. and typically it would be a $600 experience. I think I'm going to take this. This is a great opportunity, isn't it, Mary? Mm. And so I, I sit back and I look at them with them and I say, okay, so one of the things we want to look at is if you're going to have this booth, do you have anything that says what this booth is about? Mm-hmm. And is it compelling enough that people are going to stop and say, oh, keeping you organized, what's this about? I want to know more about it. Mm-hmm. And if there's only one person and you've got 50 people walking by, you've lost 49 people. Mm -hmm. 
even if you have a fishbowl that says, I'm going to give these two things away as gifts, and I really like these things, and I put my name in the fishbowl mm -hmm. for a drawing later, you're getting all those names so that you can market them later. But if you don't have a way and a process mm -hmm. to do follow-up on that fishbowl, what you've done is you've expended $100, you've probably had things printed, you've spent your time, and you've set yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. So it's really looking at something holistically right. about how you well, get started. Well, it seems like follow-up, too. I mean, uh, I've worked at different trade shows before. And you get really excited at the, at the moment of truth, and you get all these cards and leads, yeah. and then... Well, then you get busy with something else. Yeah. So it's a time management. Or the other side of it is you start calling those people, and what's the first thing they, they say? Uh, did I win the fish? Mm -hmm. Or whatever is in the fish bowl, right? Mm -hmm. You know. So um, what are some of the basic organizing things that will help someone with time management? Because that's got to, I mean, you do, you don't, you're not really accountable. You don't really have a boss. Mm -hmm. So what are some good systems that people can use to put time management into their home business? So one of the things is, is, as you say, because you're not accountable to anybody, it makes it difficult when you get an opportunity to do something that's more fun, or you feel like the laundry is that needs to take precedent in the moment, mm -hmm. or that the kids are home, whatever it is. And so it's really saying, if I want this to be a business, when am I going to carve out that time that it's truly business, and that my friends or my family doesn't call saying, well, Obviously, you work for yourself, so you can take time whenever you mm -hmm. choose. Because many of us do not do well if we don't have structured time, mm -hmm. especially if you've come from a corporate background. You're used to that. And if you get too far afield, you're not going to be successful. So the first thing is to block your time. Okay. So set time aside to do the business and then understand what it is. One of the big things that you're going to need to do is identify people who will buy your product. Right. Let's, go, let's step back to that blocking time because mm -hmm. I know what you're saying, mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't understand what that concept is. Uh, get a little more in depth on, on how do you block time. What does that mean? So if you're going to be selling something to the public, are they going to be available to take your calls? at 2 o'clock in the afternoon or are they at work because that's the the market that you're going after. If they're available in the evening or the morning, that's when you're going to have to quote unquote block your time or say this is sacred time for my client development and that's where you only focus on those things. And you're going to need to be flexible because sometimes it may be that you're going to sell on the weekends or you're going to do an expo. So it's finding out those prime times of when you can do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And if you need to do uh, research on the internet to look things up and you're using the same computer for the kids to do their homework, mm -hmm. you don't say that I'm not going to work on this now because I'll do it later in the day and then find out that, well, your child has something that's due tomorrow and so the time you're going to spend in research is the time mm -hmm. that the child is using the computer to do homework. Right. And what about all those, uh, how do you recommend that people work with interruptions? Because you, you talked about the idea of the mm -hmm. kids, you know, and I've heard the old story of, you know, the home-based business, someone sitting there and you're on the phone trying and the kids are pounding on the door and they want a sandwich or whatever, but mm -hmm. just the interruptions, you know, how do you handle phone and email? interruptions? Do you say, I'm only going to do it a certain amount of time a day or a certain time? I mean, what would you recommend to someone as far, because you don't want to miss a call or, or mm -hmm. miss an opportunity, but those can also be interruptions. They absolutely can. So I would say for emails, if you can batch those just like you would in a corporate setting, that you're looking at it you know, three to four times a day at key times so that you have time to follow up. But then when you need to be focused on things or you need to be out in the public and spending that face time with people that you do mm -hmm. that, I think that people have found smartphones a wonderful ad these days because if they're out in public and they need to meet three or four clients and they're not having them in their homes or customers, then they may be at you know, a Panera or a Starbucks or something. So you're going to need to have your device with you so that you can be doing research. Mm -hmm. You can be really maximizing the value of your right. time. So are there other challenges to time? We've talked about interruptions. We've talked mm -hmm. about blocking time. Mm -hmm. um, how about for the tasks that you don't necessarily like to do? Like, for example, I'm not a big one to do like accounting stuff or or paying bills. Of course, I don't know anyone who likes paying bills, but mm -hmm. how do you put those into your schedule too? Because it's kind of like that administrative work. You simply have to schedule those and make sure that you take care of them. So you are going to want to make a to-do list so that you can check that off and make sure that you've done, done it. And I think one of the interesting things, and it's not a multi-level marketing because I think some of that's already taken care of, but I even look at somebody like myself that I do the work and there's some clients that I do invoicing. Mm. 
you'd think that that would be the easy part to ask for the money mm -hmm. and just get it out because you know getting the money through the door takes care of all the the bills. Mm -hmm. That's one of the hardest things for me to do. Mm -hmm. I have to force myself to sit down and do it. And then I, you know, I track the time that I've expended and then I get that and I get that out to the client. So they say that on, on average, if you do the things that are hardest to do first, the rest of the day is easy. Mm. And you want to take care of those rocks, those big things that you need to get taken care of because all the little stuff can go in around that. But if you spend all your time on the little stuff, mm -hmm. you don't get to the important things and then that's going to be tomorrow and then the next day and the next day. So you're not going to have the success that you want to have. Your family's going to say you're spending a lot of time on this. Where's the money on it? Mm -hmm. This is just a craft. This isn't a real business. And you can get to the point where you say, it can no longer, it, it doesn't support me. I can no longer expend time on it and then go off and do something else. Right. How, so. how much do you think the mental game plays into having a home-based business where, you know, just what you're talking about there, the, the you know, your kids want you, your spouse wants you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your friends want you, you mm -hmm. know, but your business needs attention and everyone knows that, especially a new business, you have to put a lot of hours into mm -hmm. it. Um, how do you help people strike that balance? It comes down to, again, how much face time do you need? And it also, it's a marketing question. If you're really good and you know how to have a conversation with the right people, mm -hmm. the sales are easy. Mm -hmm. If you don't and you're wandering in the field, then it's going to take a lot more time. So I think one of the things is definitely getting education and getting support on how one can network. That can save you so much mm -hmm. time. So you want to put yourself with the decision makers or the influencers mm -hmm. that can help you identify those populations or those people that would want to buy the product, whether it's something that you've made or something that somebody else is, the, and you're simply selling it. But if you can partner with good people and you can be good with your languaging skills about this is, these are the features, mm -hmm. these are the benefits, this is why this might be a great fit for you, is this going to work for you? If you can have those conversations to find out very quickly that this is or is not going to be a good fit, or I can show you how it might be of greater benefit for you, mm -hmm. then I can close the sale. But then comes the, the follow-up because you also want the sales that keep coming in, right. right? so that you have to have those touch points. It's about relationships. When you have a small business that you're trying to run, it is definitely about the relationships. Mm -hmm. You have to create time for your clients, whether it's an email touch or a phone call touch or a physical and person touch. Sounds like more and more organizing to be done. So yep. we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, I want to pose to you a question about what happens when you get to that point where it's maybe more than just you. You either have to add a person or maybe you just have too much to do and you need to delegate it. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about that. We're talking about small business success at a home-based business and we're with Mary Dykstra and we'll be right back. Now you see it. Now you don't. Now you see it again. Smeed erasable fast tab hanging folders have a special erasable surface that makes it easy to reuse and revise the labels on your hanging file folders, saving you time and money. All you need is a permanent marker, standard white eraser, and Smeed erasable fast tab hanging folders. Use erasable fast tab hanging folders with a built-in reinforced tab that you can use again and again. No more messing with tabs that fall off. Erasable fast tab hanging folders are stronger than standard hanging folders and come in a variety of colors for even more organizing possibilities. Erasable fast tab hanging folders, an eco-friendly reusable innovation from Smeed, keeping you organized. We are back on Keeping You Organized, and today we're talking about uh, small business success, especially if being in a home-based business where you're kind of on your own, whether it be a multi-level marketing business or some enterprise you're starting at home and you're wearing all the hats. And Mary Dykstra, you're with us today to talk about uh, you're a certified professional organizer mm -hmm. with NAPO and also the NAPO president, mm -hmm. and you have your own uh, business, business in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we talked about before the break this idea what happens when this little business starts getting a little bit bigger or mm -hmm. when you're feeling overwhelmed and you know maybe you don't want to do the invoicing mm -hmm. when is the right time to expand or add either people I, or resources right i think the one thing that you always want to do is find out your strengths and mm -hmm. you want to work to your strengths and if invoicing or ordering is not your strength and you can delegate that to a virtual assistant mm -hmm. or you can bring somebody in, say a student or a, 
um, a mom who's just looking for a couple of hours here or there, but she's got good skills and is very well organized, then that is a great time to offload, even if it's for two or three hours a week that you have somebody help you with those things. Mm -hmm. Because when you find out really what you need to do and what you're good at, that's really where you want to spend the time. If you need to have help in creating some brochures and you're not good at that, but you've got even a student mm -hmm. who gets credit for it or could do it very inexpensively, get them to do it because if you wait until you're ready to do it and you have time to do it and you're already overwhelmed and you don't know how to do it, you're not going to start on right. it. Right. How do you find those people? I mean, is there a, a, a way you can go about finding either students or, like you say, a virtual assistant? Where, where, where do you find people like that? Well, you can go to your local university and college because, mm -hmm. or, or junior college, community college, because they have resources built in that you call and say, I'm looking for a student who can help me with blah, 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 blah. Uh, sometimes just referrals, asking mm -hmm. friends and neighbors. Uh, if you see that there's some kids that are proficient and that they seem to have their act together, especially with the digital. Mm -hmm. Some of these younger people are so bright and so smart. They mm -hmm. can take us from here to here in a heartbeat. Um, the other thing is is that you can go online and you can even get just a professional organizer, I shouldn't mm -hmm. say just, but for a lot of hours sometimes using a professional organizer who may not have some of those skill sets is not the best and highest use of your time, but there's a very vibrant community of virtual organ or virtual assistants mm -hmm. that they can order things for you, they can pick up the phone for you, they can do a number of things, and they know your business, and you can buy them by the hour. So mm -hmm. you can even say, I'm going to buy five hours or ten hours block, and then you shift things over to them as need be, and then they can take some of those things off that are difficult for you mm -hmm. to do mentally or emotionally. Well, you touched on. Uh, technology there. Uh, what do you see in your practice mm -hmm. how technology is helping the home-based business? What kinds of either equipment or apps or things that are you seeing are like either must-haves or things that are really helping people get organized at home? Boy, um, well when you're getting organized at home that also means you're getting organized out on the road because mm -hmm. if you're doing visitations and you're in the car then you want to get organized around that. The smartphones have been phenomenal. They allow you when you're sitting in your car waiting to go in and, and meet with a potential client or a buyer to check your email, to respond to things. We've got uh, applications and phones now that you can speak. I, I have a phone that I, I don't type anymore. I just speak into it for my text messaging or for my emails and just by speaking it goes ahead and it translates it into the written word. I look at it, make the minor corrections I need to do and I, I hit send. Mm -hmm. And if I'm trying to work on something and I'm thinking, boy, I'm not tracking my time very well, I can simply ask my phone to say, give me a five minute countdown. Mm -hmm. And it'll bing me in five minutes and I know, okay, I need to shift my focus or I still need to finish these kinds of things. Things. So having r apps, so if you're driving then and it's part of the business, you get to deduct mileage. So there's apps out there that say this is the start of the miles, this is the end of the miles. If you're parking in places where there are a lot of cars and you're focused on trying to get to the client, you're not good about remembering where your car is, there's apps to even tell you where you've parked and how to get back to mm -hmm. them. There's all kinds of wonderful opportunities to have things. Mm -hmm. um, note taking on the iPhone now and the other, you know, Android, other phone bases are very easy, so it's all captured right mm -hmm. there. You can have your to-do list, you can have your calendar come in. So using that as a very helpful piece of technology has been great. One of the things that I found for myself is, I used to take handwritten notes, mm -hmm. and I was at somebody's house the other day, and I was a guest overnight, and I needed to have access to the internet, and they had something that was about this long <laughs> in terms of all the, the letters and numbers. And instead of writing each one down that I was going to have to transfer over later, and I didn't want her to lose her piece of paper, I got my phone out. I took a quick snap. I said, thanks. You can put that away now. And when I'm ready to go on the Internet, I can simply look at the picture and then input the numbers. Mm -hmm. So taking pictures of things, even stupid things at the store if I'm going to buy something, mm -hmm. I know that they don't put the price on the products anymore. So I'll take the smartphone, I'll take a picture of it with what the price is up above it. So when I get to the checkout, if the counter mm, person says, yeah. oh, well, this is 19.95, and I saw the sign that said it was 12.95, I don't have to go all the way back, have somebody else do that, or have them call me a liar. I just throw them the picture nice. of the phone and say, this is the price. They can adjust it immediately. Mm -hmm. So just thinking, if I can take an image of something and capture it, 
Yeah. I don't have to write anything. I don't have to explain anything. I can just show it. I can also send it off mm -hmm. in a text message. I have clients for my organizing business that when we move things or pack things up or they have to have it temporarily moved, I take images of all those things. And I had a client while I was here, she said, did you take a picture of all the bookcases because I've got a number of carousels and I need to put them back now that the painting's done and I can't remember where they go. Mm. I had it on my phone and I said, can I text it to her or you want it as an email? She said, texting is really great. So I texted it, she had it within two nanoseconds and she was able to do the work mm. without me even being there. Wow. So when you start using the technology to work to your advantage, whether you're selling potatoes or you're doing organizing, it's terrific. Right. Well, let's go back to the home-based business and talk about maybe the top two or three challenges. Uh, you know, you deal with a lot of people. What, what are the common high-level uh, challenges that most individuals have? Follow-up. Follow-up. Okay, so how do we, how do we organize follow-up then? You have to have some way that, as you said, you did um, a show mm. and you've got a number of cards and you've got a number of what you'd call warm to really hot leads. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to separate those out. If you're getting a card at a show, if, first of all, can you write down what that was about and what you're going to you know, reconnect with them later on so you're not having to try to remember through 500 cards. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. And then follow up is how am I going to follow up with them? Am I going to do a letter? Am I going to do a call? Do I have something that's already taken care of? I've had a number of clients that I go into and they say, and I see all the cards and they say, yeah, but that, that show was like two months ago and I should have followed up within mm -hmm. a week. It's cold. They're not even going to want to hear from me. So then it's let's talk strategy. Right. What can we put out there? What event can we put in front of you that says, now is the reason I'm getting a hold of you. Mm -hmm. I'm having a special, you know, we've got $5 off or whatever, or it's a season change, so this mm -hmm. is a terrific time to look at this product again so that they can step back into that conversation. So the biggest thing is get somebody mentally to shift. You're either going to let this go and get rid of it because it's clutter at this point, or you're going to say, I'm going to try it, and whether I need to do two or three times, mm -hmm. what's your number that you let those go because they're not real clients. As you said, they just want to know if they want a fishbowl. Right, right, right. Well, we're about out of time. I want to give you, you the opportunity to promote your business a little bit, tell people uh, what you do and how they can get a hold of you. Perfect. Thank you so much. So it's Mary Dykstra Novus now, mm -hmm. and my company is Within Reach Organizing Services, and the website is withinreach.biz, that's B-I-Z. Mm -hmm. My phone number is area code 616-453-2976, and I work with a number of groups, and I work with distributors on very high levels, also with their downline, so that I can help them get organized and figure out what they're selling, how they're selling it, how they're presenting it and be successful in that. So thank you for having me here Well, today. great, and for those that missed it, we'll put that in the show notes, and uh, we do appreciate it. So okay. there you are, if you have a home-based business, uh, now you know how to be a little more organized. And Mary, thanks again, and we'll hope to have you back on another show. Again. I would love it, thanks so much for great. having me. That's it for today on Keeping You Organized. Mm -hmm.